Trogdor, the board game. <laughs> what can I say? This game is all about burn and dating the countryside, burn and dating the peasants. In this game, players will work together to help Trogdor burn and date everything in sight. From the countryside, to the thatched roof cottages, to the peasants, it's like the clearance sale at Toys R Us. Each player will start with an action card, and then on their turn they'll draw a second action card, and they get to choose which one to use. Each action card gives you different abilities, as well as a different number of action points. So talk to your teammates about which one to use, so that you can do the maximum amount of burnination. But watch out for the archers and knights. They're controlled by the game, and they'll attack Trogdor if they can. You keep track of Trogdor's health on the Trog meter using leftover peasants. If Trogdor takes damage, the peasants are sent into the void, and they can't be reclaimed. If Trogdor runs out of health before you burninate the entire countryside, the players lose. If you do manage to burninate the entire countryside, and everything in it, the players win. So with that, let's learn how to play Trogdor. I got this game from the Kickstarter when it first launched, so some of these contents may not come in the standard edition of the game. I'll do my best to say which ones are Kickstarter exclusives, but just be warned that I might make some mistakes. In the box, you'll find 25 double-sided countryside tiles, one trog meter, wooden meeples for trog door, the trog hammer, two knights, one multi-directional archer, seven peasants, one flame helmet, and three double-sided thatch roof cottages. Four decks of cards, the keepers of Trogdor, the items of Trogdor, the action cards, and the movement cards. One void card, and one rulebook. When setting up the game, set out the countryside tiles in a 5x5 grid with the green side face up. You can use one of the examples from the rulebook if you want to, or you can just shuffle them and set them out randomly. The examples in the rulebook are designed to have different levels of difficulty, so I'd recommend using them. They also show you where to put all of the meeples. If you use a random layout, I'd recommend choosing which tiles the knights and archers will start on before setup. If you put one of those tiles in the center, just move it over and put the next tile in the center instead. The cottages go on the cottage spaces with the little fences on them. Put one peasant meeple on each of the cottage spaces and put Trogdor in the center space. Next, separate all of the Trog Hammer cards from the rest of the action cards. Then put the remaining action cards, movement cards, void card, Trog Hammer cards, and the Trog Meter near the board. Put the Trog Hammer Meeple and the Flame Helmet on the spaces indicated on the Trog Meter, and put all the remaining peasants on the numbered spaces at the bottom of the Trog Meter. Next, shuffle the Keepers of Trogdor cards and the Items of Trogdor cards, and give each player one of each. These cards give you special abilities to use during the game. Lastly, deal one action card to each player. All of your cards may be kept face up so everyone can see them. Determine who goes first by using any of the suggestions in the rulebook, especially the longest nose hair, or use any other method you like. Even though all the players are on the same team, each player takes their turn individually, similar to Monopoly, or basically every other board game there is. On your turn, you'll first draw an action card. You should already have one action card from the setup, so now you have two. You can only use one of them on each turn, but at least now you have a choice. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? The action cards tell you how many action points you can use on this turn, and they also usually give you a special action you can do. Trogdor can use action points to perform any of the following actions. Trogdor can move to any adjacent tile. He can't normally move diagonally. Also, if he moves into a space with a knight or trog hammer, he takes one point of damage. If Trogdor is in the same space as a peasant, he can spend an action point to chomp him, put the peasant onto the trog meter. If Trogdor is on a cave tile, he can tunnel to the other cave tile for one action point. If Trogdor is on a mountain tile, he can use an action point to hide. Place him sideways so you can tell he's hiding. If Trogdor is hidden during the bad guy's movement phase, he can't take any damage. If you have any action points left, don't use them to move Trogdor or else he won't be hiding anymore. That's my interpretation of the rulebook, by the way. 
It doesn't say that he stops hiding if he uses other actions, but it does say he can only take the hide action in the mountains. Interpret this however you like. You don't have to spend all of Trogdor's action points if you don't want to. Trogdor can burninate any tile, peasant, or cottage for one action point. There's a couple of things down in the fine print, though. If a tile has any special abilities, it retains them even when it's burninated. Trogdor can't burninate the lake tile until all four tiles to the north, south, east, and west are burninated. He can't burninate a cottage until all nine surrounding tiles are burninated. You can still do the tile underneath the cottage, just not the actual cottage. Oh, and if you burninate a peasant, he gets the flame helmet. Draw a movement card and move the peasant along the path. Ignore all the normal rules for a movement card, which we'll cover later on. Just use the movement path on the right side of the card. The peasant burns every tile he touches, including the one he started in. The same rules apply for the cottages, so they can't be burned if all the surrounding tiles aren't burned. If the peasant moves into the lake tile, whether it's burned and nated or not, he is extinguished and stops moving. The lake tile doesn't burn. If the peasant ends his movement on an already burned and nated cottage, draw a new card and move him again. And also, any other peasants he comes into contact with will also burn and move in the same manner. Once you finish the first peasant's movement, start on the next one before anything else. Finally, if the peasant doesn't become extinguished by the lake, once he's done his movement, he goes into the void. Okay, that's all the actions Trogdor can take. So now really quickly, I'm just going to run through an example of a turn. We're going to choose this card. It gives us four action points. We'll use two action points to move Trogdor twice. Then we'll use one to chop a peasant. And then we'll use the fourth one to burn and the tile. This card also gives us a special ability. It says that after Trogdor's actions, he can burninate any number of diagonally adjacent tiles. So we'll do all four. Once you're done using all your action points, discard the action card you used. Now it's time to move to the baddies. Draw a movement card. In the top left corner, there's a small grid labeled peasants. However many peasants are on that grid is the minimum number you need to have on the board. If you have less, take the number you need to make up the difference from the trog meter. They spawn onto the board of the cottages. There are a couple of exceptions though. Each cottage can only spawn one peasant. If there's already a peasant on that cottage tile, you can't spawn any new ones there. Also, if the cottage is burninated, you can't spawn any peasants there. Leave the peasants you can't spawn on the trog meter. If there are more available cottages than you need, the players can choose which one the new peasant spawns at. Once you finish spawning new peasants, if any, move all the peasants one space in the direction indicated in the lower left corner of the card. If it says move and repair, the peasants will unburninate any tiles they land on. Not the ones they started on, though. Next, move all the knights and the archer meeples along the movement path on the right side of the card. The Troghammer counts as a knight once he's on the board. If any of them have to move off the board, wrap them around to the other side of the board and keep going. During the knight's movement, if they move through a tile with a burninated cottage, they repair it. The Troghammer counts as a knight, so he does the same. If any of the knights move into the same space as Trogdor, he takes one point of damage. When Trogdor takes damage, take a peasant off of the trog meter and move it directly into the void. The archers don't damage Trogdor if they move into his space. Instead, once the archers stop moving, they shoot two arrows. If they last moved east or west, they shoot them east and west, and the same goes for north and south. If Trogdor is in that path, he takes a damage. The path doesn't include the space they're on, so if Trogdor is sharing their space, he's safe. Trogdor's health is tracked using peasants on the trog meter. He can go all the way down to zero without dying, but if he takes any damage while he's at zero, then the game is over and the players lose. As soon as Trogdor takes his first point of damage, it's time to introduce the Troghammer. Shuffle all the Troghammer cards into the action deck and place the Troghammer himself in the center tile. If you draw a Troghammer card on your turn, immediately discard it, and then draw a movement card. Move only the Troghammer along the movement path. Just like the other knights, he will damage Trogdor if he moves into the same space. After moving him, draw a new action card and start your turn as normal. There's no limit to the number of Troghammer cards that can be drawn in a single turn, so practice those shuffling skills. As I've mentioned, this game is a cooperative game. Everyone's on the same team. So feel free to look at each other's cards and abilities. 
Ask your teammates to help with strategy and so on. There's no such thing as table talk in this game, unless you're playing on a wagon filled with pancakes. Each player has a Keeper of Trogdor card, which gives them a special ability they can use during their turn. Some of these abilities will be the same as the abilities you get from the action cards, like wraparound or diagonal movement. Other ones are more unique, like the ability to swap action cards with other players, or just straight up cheat. The item cards are mostly one-time uses, though they can be recharged. The card will say at the bottom what to do to recharge it. The rulebook says you can only use these on your turn unless the card states otherwise, but most of them are a little bit vague about when to use them. Interpret this rule however best suits you. In order to win, you must meet these criteria as are laid out in the beginning of the rulebook. If you still have peasants on your trog meter, they don't have to be burninated to count. They just can't be on the board. If Trogdor goes below zero health, Trogdor is defeated. Except he doesn't lose games, he rage quits. Trogdor goes into a fiery rage and burninates everything in his path before slamming the door to his room in a blaze of glory. Draw five movement cards and move Trogdor along them one at a time. Everything he touches is burninated, even if it doesn't meet the requirements. Even the knights and the archers. Don't light the peasants like normal, just move them directly to the void. Once Trogdor has had his fiery revenge, it's over!